Over the past two years, we have been living under the most tyrannical medical overreach that we have ever endured in the United States of America, even here in the state of Texas. And that's due to COVID and vaccines. I had a lot of questions, so that's why today I'm sitting down with Rebecca Hardy with Texans for Vaccine Choice. We have options, not just children, but we as adults have options, even here in the state of Texas. You don't want to miss this show. I had a lot of questions answered. So don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring that bell. Three years ago, my girlfriend was moving from North Carolina uh, down to Texas. Now this was, of course, pre-COVID. Pre and she was sending me all of the documentation about not getting her, child, her children vaccinated. She's from North Carolina, moving out um, to Salina. And during that time, before it was pre-COVID days, it was normal. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it was an absolutely normal thing to do. It's like parents did not want to vaccinate their children. They had no issues. And then when the COVID hit, which is something people don't like to talk about, um, vaccines became the forefront mm -hmm. of the conversation. And I, I heard you say that we endured two and a half years of medical overreach. And it seems like we're gonna talk about it today. We're gonna to talk about vaccines. It's almost like a, a word, and I've heard this on podcasts before. It's something they don't want us to talk about. It's, it's a bad word. They've made it a bad word. They've used vaccine to scare the snot out of people, to weaponize <laughs> it. And just before, it was just, for, for me as a mom, I'm not anti-vax whatsoever. Um, my children were vaccinated as children. I thought, and it was, that was normal, because you go to your pediatrician, you have trust in them. But we've endured two years of complete tyrannical medical overreach by this government, and it's really put the COVID, the COVID vaccines um, have put a strain on so many people's lives. It, people have lost their jobs. Some children couldn't go to school. Um, companies had to close. Um, the mandates were just out of control. So let's talk yeah. about the COVID vaccine. Let's just get that conversation out of the way because this isn't a conversation I've never had with anybody. When we're really jumping into vaccines, yes. I've never done it. I was just advised, this is great for your kids. Let's do it. But since it's so controversial now, and it's stupid to even have to say that a vaccine's controversial, but that's where we are, and I've learned a lot. And I do believe that, so even though yes. it was a rough two years, I think it's brought a lot of tension and made people start asking questions that they never thought, like me, I never thought I would have to look into vaccinations, um, but now I am, and I think other people are doing so now. So it's been actually worked out for some good. I completely, agree the um, the issues that the, the this fast tracked nature of this covid vaccine has really shined a, a a light on all of the issues that Texans for vaccine choice has been kind of yelling from the mountaintops for for many many years and these are issues such as uh, you know Right now, these all these vaccines are are under the emergency use authorization. There are two that have received the full FDA approval, but those, to my knowledge, are still not even in wide distribution at all in in America. So we're still providing these EUA vaccines, and by nature, the EUA was meant to be a very temporary, short-lived. Um, uh, medical product and here we are t nearly two years later and it's still being pushed just this week um pfizer's asking for another eua for their new bivalent um covid vaccine so we're just they're they're doubling if not tripling down on the the eua this fast tracked warp speed okay that's nature that's, okay you bring, raise a question because i think that's what did it for a lot of people um i don't think parents or, or people feel like um if, if it's good for them, they're going to take it. I think what raised a lot of questions, like you said, um, I know they like to use the word warp speed because mm -hmm. it was uh, vaccinations were produced in the fastest in history. Typically, what raised a lot of red flags for people was the lack of documentation that they had yes. on, the vacuum, on the vaccines, but also these vaccines were created and issued within what, six months? If, and it takes what, seven yes. years, isn't it? At least it, the typical testing that goes on with a, you know, a childhood right. vaccine is around seven to 10 years so that they can test for safety, test for efficacy, test for long-term uh, red flags right. that come up. And with this warp speed thing, what we are seeing is that, I mean, 
by the very definition of warp speed, there are zero long-term safety studies, zero. I mean, this is the most massive scale human experiment that we are experiencing right now um, on the planet. With the vaccines now, there were a lot of people that raised a lot of questions, um, and it just seems like no one was allowed to raise yes. any questions. Even physicians were persecuted. Physicians lost their jobs about yes. questioning um, how the vaccines were going to um, affect people long term or with ailments. But it seems like today, a lot of the um, questions that were raised, some of the concerns that were raised, not just by doctors, because I've seen so many parents who have never jumped into really studying the mRNA. They started yes. diving into this. They were kicking people off of social media. They were getting fired from their jobs. So have you guys seen um, the CDC or the NIH come back and say that some of the concerns over the vaccines that the actual citizens and the physicians that were not um, quote unquote backing everything that the CDC said, yeah. um, that they're right. They're starting to correct some of the issues that the, and raise some of the concerns that the parents had. They're saying, yeah, actually, this is right, that you can get the vaccine and get COVID, not just once, not just twice, yeah. um, even three times, um, and that's why they're just considering more boosters. Yes, so just recently, the CDC did uh, do a course correction, a pretty dramatic one, where right. they uh, uh, came out and said, we're treating vaccinated and unvaccinated the same, uh, which again, we're, we were seeing this very early on where the vaccinated were uh, getting infected and they were obviously transmitting it. So it was very clear to those of us that were paying attention that the vaccines were not doing what they had all guaranteed, that it was 100% safe and 100% effective. These were th words that Burks and Fauci and all of the others absolutely said. They said they were 100% effective. And then very quickly when the vaccinated were getting, getting COVID for you know, once, twice, three times, like you said, it was very obvious that they were, um, they were not all they were um, promoted to be. And so yes, while the CDC's correct, that recent correction that they put out um, was nice to see, it was about a year too late. Hmm. I never knew that there were two separate schedules. Um, I thought, when you go to school, they give you a list of all the vaccinations that the child needs before they can go into school. And I always have to reference the children because um, I have kids. And so yeah. that's what we did and that's what my mom did to me. So they always give you a schedule. I did not know that there was a schedule that the school recommends because they, I don't know if they, do they follow the CDC? Yes. And then there's also vaccinations, which I have recently dealing with right now. Um, just recently took um, my youngest to the doctor and she said, okay, it's time for your daughter's HPV shot and it is time for your daughter's second meningitis. Well, thanks to COVID, you know, I go to, which they can't stand it in the medical field. I go to Dr. Google and I'm like, what is in, what's in these vaccinations yeah. because I know they're just, there's some stuff that's in aluminum and I wanted to see if what was in them now because I think so much has changed from when I had mine. I'm, you know, 42 years old. And so there's two types of schedules. I did not know that. I've asked some other parents yeah. if they knew that there was a different schedule. I was kind of shocked and taken back that I was recommended these two other vaccinations and then come to find out the school's not recommending them. So yes. the parents, can, did most parents don't even know that there's two specific schedules and they're called schedules. Yes, so there is the, you know, obviously there's the CDC schedule. Those are the vaccines that the CDC universally recommends for all children. And then in Texas, we have um, the schedule for what is uh, recommended for school enrollment. And it is different. It's not drastically different, but it is different. For instance, uh, to your point, the HPV is not required for right. school. The flu shots not required for school. Um, there's a there's a handful of others, but it's it's mostly the same as the CDC schedule. But to your point, parents are not informed if they are wanting to just satisfy the school enrollment uh, uh, requirements. Then uh, they are they're most likely not getting informed consent on that in their doctor's office when they take their kids in because it, there are some variations between the CDC schedule and what's 
um, on the list of shots for school in Texas. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second because something happened in Cal when I was living in California and I talked to a lot of parents that live down at the border of Texas. Um, we had such an influx of people coming from um, illegally crossing into the state of Texas. They're bringing in all these different um, diseases uh, to our states and some of the physicians I even had this recommended to myself, to not my myself, but to my daughter back in California, and it's happening down in South Texas. Some of the pediatricians are rec recommending additional, um, I don't even know if they're boosters, but getting extra shots to be able to ward off some of these issues that are coming across the border. Have you, have you heard of this taking place even in the state of Texas? Yeah. I know it's happening there. It's starting to slowly happen here, but have y'all looked into any of that? I haven't heard of okay. that happening. I, it would be more so measles. It was the measles that they yeah. were trying to get us to do. Well, I remember during that 2014, uh, the Disney measles, you know, that yes. just triggered so much legislation across the state and really is uh, what birthed Texans for vaccine choice. But really? um, yes, it's a it's a great story. <laughs> um, but we um, I knew I know that in moments of you know kind of an outbreak, they will recommend additional vaccines, but typically, but regularly, I have not heard of that happening regularly um, in our southern counties in Texas yet. It would be highly unusual in a non, you know, epidemic or outbreak circumstance because those aren't on the schedule. It's probably not happening as regularly here just because there's not the emergent outbreaks happening, even though they, the talking heads predict it happening every year without fail. The sky is falling, measles is back, polio's back, all these things are back. It never materialized. That's what it seemed, that's really mm -hmm. kind of like what they made it seem like. They put yes. like the fear of God in you. I'm um, kind of like what they did with the COVID vaccine, sadly. Um, yeah. What, where does, I'm curious, where does the CDC um, start bringing in other type of vaccines? Did you say like it's during emergency yes. times only? Is that when they recommend a vaccine? So how do they make the decisions on what vaccines children are supposed to have? They dep and separating what the physician says that they need to have. Does the physicians follow the CDC guidelines or yes. do the physicians just recommend this and then, oh, by the way, you need to have your second meningitis shot? Because I yeah. don't really, to be honest with you, I don't have a clarification why my daughter needs her second meningitis shot. I have no idea why she needs it if she already had one and the school's not requiring it. So the that doctor is following the CDC schedule um, and not the schedule for school. The school does not require that that high school meningitis shot. Okay. And that's, that shot is not on the list of shots for school in Texas, but it's on the CDC schedule. So that's why you're getting kind of somewhat conflicting recommendations from your doctor and the school. What's confusing to me because it I is. just found out about this. I'm yes. kind of like, uh, how many other shots did I not know that she really didn't need to take for school rather than, oh, I'm just yes. going to go to the pediatrician and then we're going to do 10 shots in her leg like yes. we had we had to do when she was younger, which well, was very difficult for me to do. But your child doesn't get into school if she doesn't have her vaccinations. And I I really wasn't even thinking about going to an organization like what you guys have and yes. really finding and reading um, and looking into how I could make sure and get her exempt that she wouldn't be exempt from school because I had I really didn't have any fear over the vaccinations yes. at the time I didn't have it you know well and I don't I my best advice to to all people whether they're parents making decisions for their kids or adults making decisions for themselves my best piece of advice is to never make a vaccine decision based on fear whether it's fear of a disease or fear of an adverse reaction fear needs to not be playing a part in that decision at all it needs to come from your decision needs to come from a point of well uh, deep informed consent a point a, a, from a place of information and confident information and whatever that looks like to you right. be confident in that decision but don't make it based on fear and you you were making these decisions back when you were in California correct um some of them were, well I'm from I'm from Texas okay and then what well, we were in California for six years okay. but the schedules now that I can say the word yes <laughs> sound like a pro now I'm not uh, but back in California they had different requirements so yes. each state has a different requirement a different set yes. I had to bring of course and of her, course different laws you're and, you know completely and correct. And California has the some of the, if not the strictest laws yes. in the state uh, in the in the nation and it's very difficult 
difficult to get an exemption it is. in California. And the more and more laws that they pass, right. it becomes, you know, even they've passed laws that restrict the number of exemptions a single doctor can write. I mean, we're talking extreme overreach from the government into personalized medicine in that state. In Texas, we do have um, exemptions. We have exemptions that are, I mean, there's some bureaucratic steps you have to right. jump through to access the exemptions, um, but you can be exempt for one, some, or all vaccines. And, um, but this information is not readily available to parents. And that is something that I feel like Texans for Vaccine Choice is one of our mission statements is just to help inform parents of their rights. Texans for Vaccine Choice is about parents having a choice. And yes. I, I think some parents and don't feel like it depends on what state they are. Some parents and actually adults, um, they felt like they weren't really given a choice even yes. over COVID, um, even with some children, either your kid's gonna have the vaccine or they can't go to school. You have to have the vaccine or you're gonna lose your job. Mm -hmm. um, it was pretty rough, but the one thing about Texas is we do have a choice. Parents have a choice to, um, not vaccinate their children. It's harder for adults. I haven't, we haven't even talked about adults getting exemptions because I know some friends that um, went for some exemptions and they got denied yes. here in the state of Texas, even though, you know, what Governor Abbott did, it still did not stop people. It's, and but this is, and they, they frown upon um, exemptions. A lot of people do. Yes. And I've heard people in the past and I've heard the news and the media because they want to um, guilt people into doing something and saying, um, is this a moral, it's a moral responsibility and what you do is affecting other people. But at the end of the day, it's really a personal choice on what you decide to put into your body yes. vaccine wise. It is. So yes. So in Texas, we do have exemptions for school enrollment. You know, all charter schools, all public schools, and any private school that accepts any state funding uh, and higher education facilities are compelled to accept the, ex the exemptions that we have in, in Texas for those students that are being enrolled. Um, you just go to the Department of State Health Services website, you request an exemption, they mail them, uh, and and you, then you get it, you fill out the form, you notarize it, and you turn it into the school nurse. Um, now, to your point, the adult exemptions have been, I mean, it has been an all consuming task here at Texans for Vaccine Choice. I was about Choice. to say, we this is been, a whole nother level yes. now. You're not just dealing with children and pre made, you know, paperwork yes. that you can just request online in the yes. state of Texas. It's, now you're dealing with adults. Yes, it's been so easy been, being able to help a, a, the parents because it's a very streamlined, process for those school exemptions. For adults with their jobs and such, this has really become almost a, another whole arm of Texans for Vaccine Choice is helping adults navigate exemptions for their, their employers. Because to your point, these um, executive orders from Governor Abbott right. simply have been ignored. And so many Texans, Texans today are still losing their jobs it's over, it's over the COVID vaccine. Happening. How do you deal with, I know you may not know this answer, but this is another thing we're having to deal with. We have people that have, that work like my brother, for instance, he works for a company outside of Texas. Yes. So um, he's working for a company in another state. They are requiring vaccinations. And now luckily enough, they did honor his because he does, he has the ability to work remotely. Yes. Um, but they work out of, out of state. Do you know by any chance if the state of Texas is working on anything like that? Or do they just believe at this point, um, it's up to the governor that his executive order still stands? Um, yes, so this, that, you know, <laughs> These are a lot, very muddy waters and it's something we are navigating um, along with everybody else. You know, every, and uh, the issue is that every company has set their own requirements, their own exemption policies. Some are very lenient, some are very strict, some are, I mean, you just don't know. So every circumstance has to be individually crafted. Um, as far as the exemption paperwork. And that requires just a lot of time to dive into the policy, dive into how we can craft the exemption to comply with the policy. And um, yeah, and add in a 
this is an out-of-state employer. I mean, it's talk how, about muddy how waters. Do you, yeah, how do you do that? I mean, well, we have I've a, had people beg me. They're like, Camber, you know so many people. Can you please yes. help me? And I'm sitting here thinking, I don't know what laws you fall under. I don't know. Your yes. contract with your company, the address for the company is in New York City. Yes. It's totally different. I don't even know how to redirect people or where to send them because it's such, it's like you said, muddy waters. It and is. it really shouldn't be that way, but they politicize this so much. And yes. like you said, they're doing things out of fear and out of control. Um, I think people really do, some people, I think some companies have the best intentions, but at this point, at the end of the day, I think we have the right to pick and choose what we do. But I don't know where to just advise these people on what to do in Texas. I mean, yes. it's hard for me going, you know what? You either get the exemption or you don't. Do you get a religious exemption? Um, so we have, a, to answer your question, we have a yeah. pretty big network of lawyers oh. and um, clergy that we are working with in order to um, help people navigate these exemptions for, right. for their employment. And it's been a, um, you know, kind of a full-time job, kind of connecting the right people with the right person right. and making sure that they have what they need to um, satisfy the requirements that their, their, their boss is asking for. I have seen vaccines change over, I would say maybe the last decade. I personally noticed the last decade. Um, I noticed when um, I was younger, um, there was, I don't call it different, a formula, different formulation. Um, there was a lot of parents, a lot of concerns from physicians. I was even in the medical, medical field and they were really concerned about the high contents of mercury that was in it. And then um, that raised a lot of eyebrows were some parents and that's when parents started really looking into and plus the internet came out mm -hmm. um, and people were able to do their homework and do their research on what was actually in these vaccines and now some of the vaccines are putting um, they took some of the mercury out and you can correct me if I'm wrong here and then they started adding some a lot more aluminum in there and I'm not mm -hmm. going into the whole medical details of aluminum um, but they're not good for you whatsoever when did when was there a pivotal change over the last few decades of when vaccines started changing or they started catching um, some of the stuff that was in the vaccines and going, you know what, this really may not be good um, for Americans, so we're going to change it. And did you see, it? was there any effects of that change or was it f better? Yeah, so th this is a... <laughs> This is a deep question and I'm glad you asked it. So yes, several decades ago, there were some uh, bells, uh, you know, some alarm bells that sounded about the mercury that were in the vaccines. And they did uh, compel, the, the, our government compelled these uh, vaccine makers to remove the mercury from mm -hmm. the vaccines. What, what, and that seemed like a really great advancement and improvement. But what we need to realize is that they replaced one heavy metal in the vaccines with aluminum, to your point. And these, the heavy metals exist in the vaccine, it's called the adjuvant, and this is the, the thing that causes the vaccine to actually mount the immune response. Without it, the immune response is significantly less. And so they they just did this this trade-off and kind of hoped that the American public just didn't didn't see what they were doing. And what also happened is in the 80s, the vaccine makers were losing money really hand over fist because parents were suing them because their vaccines had damaged the, one of their children. And these vaccine makers petitioned Congress and said, listen, we're going to have to stop making vaccines in America because they, we're not making any money off them anymore because of all these lawsuits. And unfortunately, Congress, instead of saying, how about you fix your product so they're not injuring children, said, oh, we'll just remove all liability from you. They did that during COVID and they're using yes. the word vaccine injury. People don't like to yes. say the word side effect and they do say vaccine injury. People don't realize that the pharmaceutical, and I believe a lot of this, I don't care uh, what anyone thinks, a lot of this is money driven, yes. is so money driven. And people aren't aware that if you do take a vaccine and there is an injury or a side effect that you have no protection from no. the government that they can keep issuing these vaccines. They are not going to be responsible for any side effects or nothing like that. It's almost impossible to take these guys down. And it's the same thing for um, 
even some pharmaceutical pills, because I remember in, in the medical industry, I, people would, the number one question people would ask my physician, and he had to be very just, very broad, they would say, what is the side effect? What's gonna be the side effect of this? Mm -hmm. Well, on TV, they just give like the 50 million side effects, like yes. you're gonna die. But my physician, <laughs> would, it is, it's true. It's like, if you take this, for that's good for you, but you're gonna die, you could possibly. <laughs> you may uh, die, <laughs> but take it anyway. <laughs> yeah, we have a stroke, a heart attack. I'm like, are you kidding me? But uh, my physician would say, any anything you put in your body, a person can react differently to yes. everything. So we're starting to see some things over the last two years. Um, one of my girlfriends, it happened to her daughter, and it's just been an absolute nightmare with what she's had to go th go through, 15 different medications now, um, from everything from COVID, and they can't even go back to the pharmaceutical companies and say, mm -hmm. this is what happened to my daughter. It's costing them thousands of dollars, while these pharmaceutical yeah. companies are calling the shots, making the pills, and they're walking free. They are, and this the EUA, gives them blanket. And what is the EUA? Because people may ask that. That emergency use authorization, okay. which is what, um, you know, all of the COVID vaccines right. are still under. There were a few that were, you know, granted the, the full, full um, approval, but those are not even widely distributed yet still in America. And those that uh, was granted back nearly I mean, I think it was January, December 2021, January 2022 is when those approvals were granted. Those, the EUA products are actually the ones that are still being widely administered in America. So um, it's, these are legally distinct products, the EUA products from the full approval products. And so we just need to make sure that, you know, what is the motivation of continuing the EUAs? And I think part of that is the, the blanket um, liability shield that the and makers wasn't, have. Didn't Governor Abbott just extend our COVID emergency another 30 days yes, here? Yes, yes, he did. Now that is interesting. So we are, mm -hmm. um, I've lost count on how many days we are into this, you know, the 15 days to flatten the curve, but it's, um, <laughs> I think it's in the 800s now, <laughs> if I let, let last count, so. Oh goodness. Is there anything else? Is there anything that you can tell the parents um, from Texas for Vaccine Choice? Anything that you, any advice that you have, any parents that's watching? Because I know there's some parents that are just kind of like on the fence right now. Yeah. Um, they don't know what to do morally. They don't know what to do um, when it comes to kick back and push back on their kids. Or yes. some people may be fearful. I'm not kidding you because you never know right nowadays what these schools are going to do. This is a great question. Yes. So my, my advice to parents, you know, again, don't make any decision based off of fear. You know, do your research, have informed consent, or, you know, get on the FDA website and read the package insert because that is not what is given to you when you take your child in for a well doctor visit. They give you this one page vaccine information statement that even the CDC says is not a replacement for informed consent. And so unfortunately, we are in a situation where the burden of informed consent is on the consumer as opposed to the healthcare provider. But this is an opportunity to parents to say, you know what, I've always had question, questions and now's my moment to really dive in. And I would just say if anybody, whether it's a parent making a decision based on for their children or for themselves, you know, if you have questions, Texans for Vaccine Choice is here to help. And we have a lot of information. We are able to provide sources, but ultimately Texans for Vaccine Choice is here to come alongside everyone in their pursuit of health, whether that is, um, you know, it, it vaccinating completely with, right. you know, the childhood schedule or the full adult schedule as well, or some or selective or delayed or zero. We support all parents in their pursuit of health. I think that's really important. People think, oh, if you're talking about vaccines, you must be anti-vaccine. And it's not, that couldn't be further from the truth. Right. You know, we are not here to take away anybody's vaccines, to uh, dismantle the vaccine right. program. That would be a, a ridiculous position for us to take because that would be us trying to do to others what that side is trying to do with us with mandates. And that is not the definition of freedom or liberty. And um, you know, we're here to say, whatever you do, we, we support you. Right. If you need help with your informed consent journey, we can also help. No, you're right. Well, I appreciate you being here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We're so lucky that we actually live in a state where we have the ability to get exemptions and have exemptions take place. Um, 
this is not an anti-vaccine type of conversation, just like she said. You have a choice, and it's not just a choice about your child. You have a choice as an adult, as in a grandparent, on what you want to do and what you put into your body. I was curious about this topic, and I wanted to know more. So if you want to know more, go to Texas Texans for Vaccine Choice. Dot com and I think I got that I got that right. So just go to Texas Vaccine Choice and you can find all the resources. Um, and I believe that's very important to parents that we have the resources um, on the tips of our fingers, especially with an organization that is keeping up with the day-to-day -day changes of what's happening in the state of Texas. So check out that website if you want to know more. So with that being said, I'll see you down the road. You made it to the end of this video. You're probably one in a million, but since you're here, make sure you go to texasscorecard.com to find more journalism and commentary, all things pertaining to Texas. Make sure you also like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit the bell. That way you can be notified when new videos come out. Thanks.